Welcome to the Introduction to Computer Science, Computer Hardware. This is Lecture B. The component, Introduction to Computer Science, provides a basic overview of computer architecture, data organization, representation, and structure, structure of programming languages, networking, and data communication. It also includes the basic terminology of computing. The learning objectives for this unit, Computer Hardware, are to describe the major components of a computer system, Provide examples of input and output devices used in healthcare. Discuss primary and secondary storage devices. Introduce binary notation and describe data representation, storage, and manipulation in binary format. Introduce data types and explain how different data types are stored and addressed. Describe the functionality of the central processing unit, or CPU, and provide examples of CPUs designed for healthcare applications. In this lecture, we will continue our discussion of computer hardware components. We will examine various types of input and output ports, discuss several types of storage devices, differentiate between primary and secondary storage, and explain how data is stored in binary format. When you look at the back and sometimes the sides of a computer, you will see ports of all sizes and shapes, small ones, large ones, square ones, round ones. Why are there so many different kinds of ports? because there are so many different kinds of peripherals that attach to computers. The Video Graphics Array, or VGA port, is a three-row, 15-pin connector used to connect a monitor to a computer. It provides basic resolution and is still in use today. The Digital Visual Interface port, or DVI port, provides high-quality output to flat panel monitors. The High Definition Multimedia Interface, or HDMI port, is a small rectangular monitor port that provides high-definition video output. The Universal Serial Bus, or USB port, is rectangular in shape and created to replace most parallel and serial port connection requirements through a common interface type. USB version 2.0, released in the year 2000, provides approximately 480 megabits per second throughput. It supports both low bandwidth devices, such as keyboards and mice, and high bandwidth devices, such as webcams. If you look into the port, you will see a black tab near the top of the port. USB version 3.0, released in 2008, provides approximately 5 gigabytes per second throughput and is meant for doing things like transferring high definition video footage and backing up an entire hard drive to an external drive. If you look into the port, you will see a blue tab near the top of the port. Another type of input-output port is the microphone and speaker port, which is an analog audio connector invented almost a hundred years ago and used today in basically the same physical format. It looks like a headphone jack. The Serial Advanced Technology Attachment, or SATA, connects internal or external storage devices to the computer. The image shown to the right of this slide illustrates two motherboard SATA ports. Third generation SATA achieves throughput of 6 gigabits per second. A networking port, also known as an RJ45 jack, is still found on today's computers. The square RJ45 jack allows a networking cable to connect the computer to another device, such as a switch or a router. Our next topic is storage devices. A storage device is any hardware capable of recording, storing, and retrieving data. It can store information temporarily or permanently, and can be internal or external to a computing device. Primary storage devices, also known as primary memory, is a medium that holds data for short periods of time. It is characterized by fast performance and fast access time. The most common primary storage is RAM, or random access memory. RAM is the primary storage area used by programs running on a computer, the operating system and running programs load directly into RAM. Anything stored in RAM is erased when power is lost, which may be a painful experience. Therefore, RAM is known as volatile memory. RAM modules installed directly on the motherboard. The image shown on the right of this slide shows two dynamic RAM, or DRAM, modules. Secondary storage devices, also known as non-volatile memory, are capable of storing data indefinitely. Secondary storage devices can be classified as internal or external. An internal storage device is installed inside the computer's case on the motherboard. An external storage device is connected to the computer via a port. The most common secondary storage is a hard disk drive, or simply hard drive. The two acronyms, HDD and HD, mean the same thing. There are both internal and external hard drives. The hard disk of a computer system is made up of magnetic platters that hold an electric charge even when the computer's power is turned off. 
The operating system, programs, and any data, for example files that a user may have created and saved, are stored directly on the hard disk. The image on the right shows a hard disk drive with its top cover removed. A magnetic head moves across the platter as it reads and writes data to and from the disk. The platter is manufactured from a special metallic alloy with a magnetic surface. Each platter on the hard disk is divided into tracks, which are circular paths around the platter. Each track is made up of a number of sectors, which are 512-byte blocks of storage space. Disk drives connect to the motherboard through a variety of cable types, such as Integrated Drive Electronics, or IDEs, and Serial Advanced Technology Attachments, or SATAs. Other types of drives exist, and as you continue your education, you will likely become familiar with them. IDEs use a 40 or 80 pin cable to connect the hard drive to the motherboard. The 80 pin cables provide better functionality. SATA drives were designed to replace IDE drives. Internal SATA drives connect to the motherboard by a 7 pin wire and operate much faster than IDE drives. Other secondary storage devices include USB flash drives, SCSI drives, SATA drives, and optical or DVD drives. Flash memory is a solid state drive, or SSD. It is a non-volatile computer storage medium and is the primary competing technology for secondary storage. Compared to HDD, SSDs are more reliable, have higher data transfer rates, lower latency, and access times. However, they are still considerably more expensive than HDDs. The image on this slide shows OCZ Vertex 2 solid state drive. Our next hardware component topic is data storage in binary format, where we'll discuss the binary system of data representation. Every circuit in a computer, regardless of its function, can be in only one of two states. It can be carrying an electrical charge and therefore be on, or it cannot be carrying an electrical charge and therefore be off. For this reason, the binary number system is a natural choice for data representation and processing by a computer. In the binary system, any integer is represented by a sequence of zeros and ones. The term bit is short for binary digit. A bit is the smallest unit of data represented in a computer. A bit has a single binary value, either 0 or 1. Bits are generally grouped together to form what is referred to as a word. A word is a unit of data of a fixed bit length that can be addressed and moved between storage devices and the CPU. A word can be 4, 8, 16, 32, or 64 bits long or more following that incremental pattern. Binary words can be translated into decimal equivalents. Each bit in a binary word represents a placeholder for a binary exponent, starting from the right and moving to the left. In an 8-bit word, placeholder values are, starting from the left, 2 to the 7th power, which is 128, 2 to the 6th power, which is 64, 2 to the 5th power, which is the decimal equivalent of 32, and so on, all the way to 2 raised to the 0 power. Any number raised to the zero power is always the decimal value of 1. If a bit's value is on, or set to the binary state of 1, then its placeholder value is added to the decimal equivalent calculation. If a bit's value is off, or set to the binary state of 0, then its placeholder value is ignored, as the decimal equivalent is calculated. Let's talk in a bit more detail about binary storage. As an example, consider a 4-bit word with the binary value of 1001. Recall from the previous slide that when examining binary placeholders, start from the right and move to the left. Starting from the right, with the number 2 raised to the 0 power, which produces a decimal number of 1, the same value as the last bit in the 4-bit word. Additionally, that bit is on since it has a value of 1. Now let's add that to the calculation to get the decimal value. Notice that the two middle values are set to zero. That indicates there is a lack of electricity during that particular moment in time. So do not add their placeholders to the running calculation. Now our equation looks like this. Finally, move to the left where the very last bit is set to on. Add the value of two to the third power, the decimal number eight to the running calculation. Therefore, the binary value 1001b, notice the subscript of b to indicate a binary number, has a decimal equivalent of 9. 
The formula to calculate the decimal equivalent of the binary number 1001 is 1 times 2 to the third power plus 0 times 2 to the second second power plus 0 times 2 to the first power plus 1 times 2 to the zero power, which is equivalent to 8 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1, which is equal to 9. 8-bit words range in value from all zeros, the value 0, to all 8 bits being on, or 1, which is the decimal equivalent of 255. This can be proven by doing the math. 2 to the 7th power, which equals 128, plus 2 to the 6th power, which equals 64, plus 2 to the 5th power, which equals 32, plus 2 to the 4th power, which equals 16, plus 2 to the 3rd power, which equals 8, plus 2 to the 2nd power, which equals 4, plus 2 to the 1st power, which equals 2, plus 2 to the 0 power, which equals 0, adds up to the decimal equivalent of 255. Consider another example in which the binary value is 11001001b, an 8-bit word. Pause the presentation and calculate its decimal equivalent. It is worthwhile to take a moment to calculate the result. Did you come up with the decimal number 201? The formula answer is 1 times 2 to the 7th power plus 1 times 2 to the 6th power plus 0 times 2 to the 5th power plus 0 times 2 to the 4th power plus 1 times 2 to the 3rd power plus 0 times 2 to the 2nd power plus 0 times 2 to the 1st power plus 1 times 2 to the 0 power. Calculating all those powers of 2, the result is 128 plus 64 plus 0 plus 0 plus 8 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1 for a decimal equivalent of 201. If the answer did not match the solution, please pause the presentation and work until the answer matches the solution in the presentation. It is important to understand data storage acronyms since they are commonly used to indicate storage capacity. Storage of data is measured in bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, and terabytes. 1024 bytes is one kilobyte. The abbreviation KB represents the word kilobyte. Notice that the K and the B are capitalized. 1024 kilobytes represents 1 megabyte. 1024 megabytes is equal to 1 gigabyte. Lastly, 1024 gigabytes is referred to as 1 terabyte. This is the pure storage numbering system, which will be discussed in more detail on the next slide. As of March 2014, the Library of Congress holds an estimated 525 terabytes of data. A typical song or an image stored on a hard disk might consume about 3 megabytes of space. Some files are larger, obviously. A chest x-ray typically consumes about 20 megabytes of storage space. Hard disk manufacturers, however, do not comply with the pure storage numbering system. In their world, 1 gigabyte equals 1,000 megabytes. Therefore, when purchasing a 500 gigabyte hard drive, it might appear that there would be 1,024 megabytes times 500. But that is not the case because the manufacturers use 1000 instead of 1024 in their math calculations. This concludes Lecture B of Computer Hardware. In summary, this lecture discussed input and output ports, primary and secondary storage devices, and data representation and manipulation in binary format.